What's up guys, Heart Pirates, TCG here. I have a video that I got from locals. It was against, it was me playing against a friend of mine and we were both playing Yellow Purple Crocodile. This was actually not on the video um, that I posted on Yellow Purple Crocodile because I wanted to, I wanted to turn it into a video about, you know, resource management. And uh, my friend reluctantly agreed to, uh, you know, let me use this video because he was, uh, he doesn't like losing on my channel, but I was like, bro, like, please, please, please. So eventually he let me use it. So big shout out to him. And I want to talk to you about a couple things because whenever you're playing a game of One Piece, it feels like every mistake leads you deeper into a rabbit hole is what I usually say, right? Is every, it's a, like this, this game is very cause and effect is because you did one th thing wrong. It leads further and further into bad decisions because you put yourself in a worse position you are you're, you 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 have hampered yourself with every mistake that you have made so i'm gonna go ahead and point out all like i'm gonna go ahead and point out throughout the course of this game that i'm gonna show you exactly why i think the way i think and how i ended up winning this game because of you know my my, my matchup knowledge so no shout no no disrespect at all to the person i'm playing against i personally have just been playing not only card games for, you know, probably 10 to 15 years out of my life, but also, you know, in terms of the types of decks I play, I play these decks that require a lot of resource management. So I have, you know, been doing this for a very, very, very long time. And he's brand new to like One Piece is his first card game. So of course, there's a lot of things you need to learn over time that he probably just doesn't know now. So I'm going to go ahead and transition to the video and we'll go ahead and talk about it. All right. So, first thing I can tell you is it's a yellow purple crocodile mirror. For those of you guys who know who don't know, these are two very slow decks that don't have a lot of kill pressure. So, relatively speaking, you are pretty safe to take life. Let me go ahead and fast forward it just a little bit. So, he's going to go ahead and play a I'm going to actually here, let me uh speed it up just a tad. So, we'll do 1.5 speed. So, he's going to go ahead and search with Miss Valentine and he's going to grab it. And then he's going to swing 6 at life. Now, for me, if you look at my hand right here on the left, I already have multiple cards that are going to give me life. And I'm in the position, I believe, because of this Miss All Sunday, to take all of this life and then on curve be able to drop the Yamato. And when I drop the Yamato, I will just heal back up again. So knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and take a life. It could also be a trigger too, which could help advance my board state. So then I go to four, uh, four Dawn right here. I swing six and he's going to go ahead and counter out of it. So here is why he counters out of it, which he's in, in most cases, he's not wrong. But this situation, because you can analyze every game is a little bit different. In this situation right here, the reason he's countering out is because he says he wants to get value off his Yamatos, right? So when his Yamatos, uh, when they when they play, he's going to be able to pop a couple things, right? However, we're both four life leaders and we're both also attacking into each other's life. So even if he doesn't attack into my life, I'm going to be attacking into his life. And the the the, the value that Yamato is going to get isn't going to be that good because Yamato at best is going to be able to kill like a miss all Sunday or something like that, right? But, you know, both of us play Kaijus, right? Both of us play big bodies that are going to be really hard to get off the board. They're 9K, they're 8 cost 9Ks, they're 9 cost 9Ks. It's going to be really hard for them to get off the board. So how you're going to be able to win this game is not through card effects that KO things it's going to be through card advantage and just you know swinging into uh you know some, someone's life until they just don't have any resource to protect themselves so right here already because I took this life and he didn't I'm now up a card I'm up plus one of a card and I go ahead and play a brulee right here this deck starts off really slow um which is why like I said you can take life relatively free he's gonna swing five at life here and I consider counting out Counter, countering out and then I realize I do the math in my head I'm like actually because I can play this Yamato on curve I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, the the mental math right now I can just go ahead and take this life and that life is now a Shirahoshi so now I am up three cards to hit to, uh, because of this trigger but you know if I would have countered out I would have gotten this Shirahoshi a lot later so you know because I already got the the, the one card off life and he didn't and now I have the to the, the the draw three trash two so technically i'm up three cards to his you know to his to his uh his zero so he plays a missile sunday and then he passes now it's my turn i'm gonna swing six at life he's finally gonna take this one all right and i'm gonna play a missile sunday i'm gonna draw a card and i'm going to pass so you know i'm still 
because I was able to replace a card with the card that I have, I'm still up plus three, you know, because he he obviously replaced the missile Sunday, which is whatever. It's, it's just a net zero, but I'm still up plus three with my with my leader effect and I'm only one life behind him. So now I have three extra cards that he doesn't have in his hand. And if you notice, this isn't going to matter at all. This 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 life isn't going to be able to pop anything. So he swings five at life. And I go ahead and I take it and I it's a it's an L Thor trigger. I can't actually trigger it. And then he swings six of life. I 2k counter out because I knew this Anel was coming and then I block. All right. So usually the fir the first person, usually the first person to, to, to take a Nell out. Um, I'm sorry. The first person to bring a Nell out right here is usually in a good position because obviously a Nell's just going to keep swinging over and over and over again. However, because he has that Anel, and because I have so many more cards than him, that was his first mistake, right? Is is by is by you know waiting by countering out of stuff and waiting too long to take life. Because now, when I play my characters, I can swing into his rested characters, and then I can continue to take cards out of his hand while I already have the advantage. I already have a plus three over him. So when I'm swinging into Miss All Sunday and an Anel for the rest of this game. I'm taking multiple cards out of his hand and he's no longer able to use his life as a resource to be able to protect those characters. So, you know, by him not taking the life, especially because he's under no pressure, he's no he's under no threat of of you know, getting killed at least right now, especially with how much life gain that he has, he is actively missing out on cards to be able to protect his characters and he's going to go down to very low hand size and he's either going to just die by me lethaling him or all of his characters are going to get completely wiped. So that is the situation that I want to break down first. That's the first thing you have to notice right here. So I go ahead and swing five. So I go ahead and swing five with my with my uh, leader first. So if you, I don't know if you, could, if you guys saw that. I almost swung with my missile Sunday first and it was going to be a mistake. Uh, I'm going to rewind it just a bit and I reach for it. And I'm like, actually, no, it's a very small thing, guys. But if I attack the missile Sunday with my leader and he lets it go, I don't need to rest. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. If I attack the missile Sunday with my leader and he lets it go, I don't need to rest my missile Sunday character and I can just leave my life active again to collect more resources. But if he saves it, not only am I taking a card out of his hand, but if I attack into it again, I'm taking another card out of his hand or he's going to let it go, either one. But I'll, I'll show you what uh, actually, you know, why that was a mistake as well. So he goes ahead and he counters out right here, the 2K counter. And because he countered out, I'm like, okay, I'll just take another card from your hand. I'm already up. Now I'm up four cards, guys. Um, yeah, four, four cards because I, I did end up 2K countering out with the... Uh, uh, of a 6k attack but then i took the life as well so i basically i'm still i'm still up four cards to, to to him so if you can see my hand is a whole book and then his hand is not a whole book his hand's like probably a chapter right so i'm in a good spot however i swing five at life here and i'm i'm representing nine dawn nine dawn represents either yamato or it represents croc so I can't actually kill this miss all Sunday. So him, he's actually going to let it go, even though he does have a 2K, or I'm sorry, a 1K counter to be able to, to protect it. It's this Miss uh, Golden Week right here. So he lets it go. And then I go ahead and pop the uh, the the Miss Golden Week and I, and, I, and, and I gain a life. So right there, it's more important to keep that character on the board because I'm I'm playing a nine cost character. So you want to be able to swing into me as much as possible, um, either my miss all Sunday or my life to be able to punish me um, for 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 using all my dawn to play a character that's normally how you do things with 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 big characters right but you know because and it's funny it's funny because i know like i said it keeps leading down a rabbit hole but because he took much less life than me early on he didn't have the cards to be able to protect the missile sunday and the missile sunday falls at a critical time where he could put a lot of pressure on my life because i only have two compared to his three and then i obviously pop the miss golden week too so that is the first mistake, like I said, is not taking life, and it leads them down the rabbit hole of not being able to protect characters early on in timely positions, and now I'm ahead on card advantage and board control because I have the Missile Sunday and the Yamato, and he doesn't. So now also, and I'm sorry, I'm going to keep pausing it, guys, but um, I want this video to be as informational as possible, educational as possible, but now if we, if we dissect this board state, I'm at two life and way more cards in hand, and he has to dedicate at least one of these attacks to fighting the missile Sunday. And if he does that, it means that I was able to take all of this life for free and then stabilize, absolutely stabilize. How crazy is that? So we'll, we'll, we'll play it. So he attacks probably, I think five into my life and I 1K counter out of it. Now, the reason I 1K counter out of it is because if you think about it like this, 
um, when, when, you, when you think about it like this, if I 1K counter out of the Miss All Sunday, technically the Miss All Sunday is a, is, is a, a super blocker because I 1K counter out with the Crocodile and then he has to attack 7K into the Miss All Sunday and it basically takes two hits for one, for one, do- or I'm sorry, for one card, a 1K counter. And then it's not that important either way. So I can just, I can just let it die. And because I, because I forced him to attack into my miss all Sunday, I forced him to rest this to know. I realized the game state was he has, he has more life than me and less cards. So if he keeps turning these characters sideways, I can keep swinging into him over and over again with my characters and I can force even more cards out of, out of hand. And because I'm already ahead on life, I'm going to be able to win through pure advantage. So I already recognized that in my head and was like, okay, I have more cards than you. I have uh, less life than you. So you are, st- you are hurting for resources right now, especially from the Shirahoshi trigger. I'm going to punish you for it so i'm not going to let you take take over this missile sunday i'm going to force you to rest this character and that is a huge problem so i'll go ahead and show you the results of that i'm not gonna lie this video has been this this video has been great so far though like this video has been super super cool oh uh real quick by the way if you guys want to buy this playmat hit me up on discord i sell this uh through paypal and um yeah i have this one and then i have the three captains one so uh hit me up if, if, if you're interested uh links gonna be in the description below so of course, I like I said, I force him to playing the Sunel, and then I, I just let it die. Missile Sunday is not important enough to give me to give him two cards. Like that's not how I'm going to win this fight. Missile Sunday is just fodder at the end of the day. So he goes ahead and plays the Golden Week, and then he plays. Uh, he gets a two uh, K counter, which is the double finger, and now he goes to four life. And four life normally would be very daunting, right? However, it's not because I don't need to attack into his life. He has one, two, three, four, five cards in hand right here, and. As you can tell, it's not a whole lot of counter. He has a 2K counter, and then he has like an L Thor and like a Blast Rest. So he has like big counters, but he doesn't have little counters, which is totally fine by me. Because even if he has four life, there's no reason for me to even like th- like there's no reason for me to give him life. I need to take cards off his board. This life doesn't matter because I'm gonna give it to him all in one turn. And like if you if you watch my last video about uh, attacking into some of these like uh, you know starving some of these guys, like I can give him life where he won't have enough time to actually like set up. And, and get the most value from the cards he gets from life. And I'll explain that in a little bit too, but cool. So now he goes to four life. It's my turn. And of course, I'm going to do what every normal person would do. I knew I didn't, I'm going to swing nine into the NL. And of course, because he turned itself sideways, I'm just going to keep punishing over and over again. He's going to use Croc's effect. Croc is going to uh, Dawn minus one, draw one, you know, discard one. And then obviously uh, Crocodile effect activates to ramp a Dawn as active. And then he's going to go ahead and give me a L Thor. So I'm like, okay, so now you have five cards in hand. I'm totally okay with that. So now I go ahead and I, can, I, I debate what, I, what I'm going to do here. I actually forget. So I attack five into his life and he goes ahead and takes it. The reason I attack five is because I'm not starving him out of resource. I'm not starving him out of resources because I already have way more cards than him. So me giving him that life doesn't matter because eventually I'm going to be able to pressure life super hard. And right now the board, the board isn't very scary because he has no way of killing me. Right. So like if I can keep doing like little chump hits with five for, with, for five, uh, for five K eventually all my big guys, if he, if he has as, as little cards in hand as possible, my big guys are just all going to connect and I'm going to put him in a spot where he either has to kill me or, or take control of my board. And because I have more uh, cards than him, he's not gonna be able to do that. So he goes ahead and counters out and then he takes the five K and then I go ahead and play the crocodile crocodile, um, is going to activate his effect to Don minus two. And I'm going to get a third life. So now we are exactly even on life and i have way more cards than him so I'm, i know i'm going to say that a lot but the card advantage is so critical here because I, he keeps turning his character sideways and he keeps having to use multiple cards or his big cards like el thor or blast Wrath to be able to protect his characters rather than using his life as a resource to be able to ca- come back into the game because technically i think he actually gained more life than me in this game but i was able to just keep stabilizing because i had so many cards and i knew he couldn't kill me i c- kept taking life willingly because i had so much counter in hand and because i was able to manage my resources better so he's thinking right here like i said i already sped it up so I'll figure out what we uh, what we need to talk about. But uh, this Pagaya right here, for those of you guys who don't know, the simulator... Damn, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the simulator does, doesn't work. Or, I'm sorry, the simulator works, but this card right here um, is not working on the simulator. This is Pagaya. It says, in the real-life version of the card, it says, once per turn, when a trigger activates, draw two, trash two. Right? So, on the simulator, it says... 
once per turn on your turn or something like that or once once per your turn or, or something like that it's like it, it it just is not right okay so he goes ahead and swings seven at my life again he's going to actually you know his play right here is actually going to play another crocodile from his hand so he's going to go down to he's going to go back up to four life so he swings seven at my life like i said i don't need to actually use my uh leader i'm sorry i don't need to use any protection because i can just heal up over and over again so he's going to swing seven at my life and i'm just going to plus off that with the missile sunday uh obviously ramp back my two dawn and then i'm going to draw a card uh and then i i messed it up here because i forgot that croc i forgot that crocodile basically it's it's a net zero with uh the the miss double finger so i get a dawn back basically yeah he, he's explaining that to me he's uh he's coaching me on that <laughs> I, I said my fault my fault i'm a blurple croc main and then and then pagaya's trigger activates i point to the screen like you guys can see like the highlight of it but pagaya but pagaya's triggers activates and i discard a russian l because it's no longer good at this point and i discard i believe it's a l thor yeah l thor because i'm like yeah i just don't need it i have so much counter and i have so much life gain it doesn't really matter too much and he's gonna obviously be in another position where he's gonna just swing he, no he makes a mistake right here i think Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He swings five at my life, and I don't want to go down to zero. So then he swings. Uh, okay, this is the mistake that he made. So he swings five at my life right here, and I 1K counter out. And then he swings 10 at my life, and I'm like, that's pretty weird, but okay, I'll take it. It should have been obviously six and then nine. That way I discard it. I mean, I still had the 2K either way, but, you know, he swings nine to my life, and he's just giving me another card, right? And then by, by me going down to zero, or I'm sorry, I'm going down to one. If I have another either Crocodile or Yamato, I just instantly heal, and I'm back up to two, so it doesn't really matter. So he swings 10 at my life, and I and I go, my life? And he goes, yeah, and I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, I'll just take it. That's fine. And then he plays another crocodile and he goes to four life. So if we read the situation again, I keep taking life willy nilly because I know I can heal and because I know I can out resource him. And then I'm like, okay, I have six more cards in hand than you. So there's no reason for me to like, I'm not in, I'm not in any danger right now. So I can just keep playing the long game and heal. And I know that the long game, which both these decks are slow. So I know there's not going to be any surprises. I'm going to just win straight up. Now here's where he makes his final mistake right here. And this is over protecting to save the NL. So like I said, this is a video about resource management. Some cards are not worth saving, right? I always, I always say to the people that I coach is don't die on a hill, not worth dying for, right? So this NL right here, he's going to waste four cards in hand or i'm sorry i think it's three cards in hand but he's gonna waste three cards in hand to be able to save this anel and it's just not worth it it's just straight it's straight up not worth it he has two other crocs he has four life he can easily let that anel go because the juice is not worth the squeeze i actually hate when people say that i can't believe i just said that oh my god but it is just not <laughs> it is not worth actually uh saving this character because you have so many other characters that are even more important at the end of the day the 7k body isn't really going to do a whole lot because i have a bunch of 9k bodies so all all he's doing by saving it is just giving me a, a punching bag to punch right so he keeps saving this anel like it's going to be a win condition like like i said i was able to recognize that missile sunday which is why i let it go earlier the missile sunday is a 5k body what is it going to do in the grand scheme of things it's going to it's going to get easily cracked and crunched by this crocodile right so obviously i let it go because it's not worth giving two cards but he keeps giving me two cards to be able to protect this anel every single time and it's just not worth it right if he keeps taking this life and using it as resources he can just eventually possibly outlast me so he uses two 2ks to get out of that attack and I look and I'm like, do I need to kill him? I'm like, not really. I don't I don't need to kill him at all. So I'm just gonna swing nine again, low dawn commitment, see what he does. If he lets it go, great. If not, it's whatever, because I can just heal again. So he's gonna activate blast breath. And because he already uses leader effects, he's gonna go to nine dawn, which is actually super important. And then here is the here is where things get good, right? This this is where things get epic. Uh I freaking uh what, what does that mean? He's like, now this is epic, right? That that little like meme format. So he is down to three cards in hand, right? I have, for those of you guys can see, like 10 cards in hand. So I have way more cards than him, way more resources. And because that is, or because of that, I'm like, do I, do I give him cards to his hand by attacking five into his life? I think about it. And I come to the decision to give him cards because I want to put him in this situation right here. Right now I have a crocodile, a Yamato, and my leader, as well as this missile sunday right here. I'm going to play either another Yamato or another crocodile. I forget which one it is. So I'm going to heal, and I don't. And there's almost no way I'm going to be able to die because of the amount of cards I have in my hand and the counters that I have, as well as triggers I could possibly have. Right. So there's almost no way that I die. 
unless things get crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him in a position where he now has to swing into me very heavily or he pretty much loses, right? So it, it, I'll let it play out and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what's up. So I debate, like I said, giving him cards and I'm like, I'm going to put you on a little bit of a clock because now that you only have three cards in hand, I'm going to go ahead and put you at two life. So we're, you're only one life ahead of me and I'm going to have three 9k bodies as well as the missile Sunday and my crocodile leader and, unless you want to just kill it, right? So I swing five, he takes it. I swing five and he takes it. So he's only one life ahead of me and I'm just miles ahead of him in card advantage. So then I play the the the, the motto and I pop the, the golden week and then I pass. So I'm just in such a commanding position right here. I have the one down open for the El, for the uh, blast breath and the El Thor. So like, and I actually have double blast breath too. So there's just there's just no way, dude. There's just absolutely no way that I that I die right here. So I put him in a position right here for those of you guys can see. <laughs> he has five cards in hand, right? Because or I'm sorry, six card, six cards in hand now because I because I gave him two and then he drew the one. Even if he life, even if he life steals here, because he has so few cards in hand, I can just crack him over and over and over again. I no longer even need to attack into his characters because he's not going to let them go anytime soon. So I can just keep cracking his life. And because I have so many cards, there's no way that he can survive the avalanche of, a, of 9k attacks that are going to go into his life over and over again. And because I'm so far ahead on cards, I know I can't die. So I'm putting him on a two turn clock. And Obviously, he has to dedicate one of these attacks into this miss all Sunday because if he doesn't, that's another body swinging into him when he has already no cards in hand. So let's let it play out, and I'll show you what I, what I'm talking about and how it kind of how it kind of plays out. And when you're able to recognize this in game, I don't know. My mind's like a uh, like a computer sometimes. Like I'll be able to look at a board state and be like, okay, you're gonna lose in three turns, or like it's like a you know like the chess bots where it's like uh, checkmate in six turns or whatever. And you're like, how the hell do you have checkmate in six turns? And then obviously like the the computer does the thing. That's kind of how my mind works sometimes. Now of course it's not perfect because I make plenty of mistakes, but when I really hone in, I feel like I can really understand this game like like with the best of them, right? With the best players in the world, I can understand this game like. Like, like, like there's no tomorrow, which I'm so happy I can actually do. Cause that's such a cool, like talent to have in a game that you're actually passionate about. And they actually have fun with. So he swings five at something and I one K counter out. Okay. Five at the missile Sunday. I one K counter out. And then I debate letting the missile Sunday go, but I realized that, and this is another thing guys about Dawn, about, about Dawn management. So if, if what happens is if I let this missile Sunday go, then he has two 9k swings going into my leader and I'm going to have to use two cards to be able to save it, right? Because obviously Blast Breath as well as a 1k is two cards from hand and I don't want to go down to zero, that's for sure. And I don't have any blockers. So by me using this Blast Breath right here to protect uh, the Missile Sunday, he is now using one of those 9k bodies just like how I did earlier with the 1k counter and then he swings into a Nell, uh, my Missile Sunday. He's now using a 9k body to swing into my Missile Sunday and then this 9k body right here is swinging into life and putting me at one again, which is just a free card, guys. It's just a free card. So he swings nine and I use Crocs Effect. I draw because I always forget to do that. And then uh, I... I think I discarded 2k here or maybe I discarded crocodile because I knew that like this game wasn't going to last too much longer and because I was able to recognize that I was like okay and then there's a brulee right there so it actually didn't matter either way but obviously you want to play his like best practices so then he plays another crocodile and then he goes to three and I'm like okay I have a pretty commanding position here I no longer because you have no cards on the board and because I'm not worried about dying what I can do is I can just swing at your life and put you on a clock. So let's see how I do that. I swing five at his life. Obviously, he's going to give me a card. There's no way that he takes that because he'd just be dead. And he's going to 2K counter out of it. And then I'm going to swing nine at his life. At least I'm pretty sure. I think it might have been a Nell. Yeah, nine at his life. Okay, cool. I was like, I was like, I wonder if I made the right play here. That would have been embarrassing. And I'm going to swing nine into his life. And then I think he's going to counter out of this one. He's going to use Blast Breath and then get it back with Crocodile's Effect. And then he's going to 2k counter out of it. And I'm like, okay, check this out. Now, this is epic, right? <laughs> but, but so I do a great play here again is what I do is I swing nine at his life and he counters out. So I'm like, okay, what's the difference between two life and one life? 
not really that different at all. So I'm going to swing nine into his Anel because he already gave me the cards. So either way, he's either going to let this Anel go or he's going to go down to one life again, but he's going to trash the resource because there's no reason to put him at one life. So I'm either taking a character off the board and guaranteeing that I can say I can live or I'm taking his life either way, but I'm not giving him the card to his hand. He's, he's going to trash it. So that's obviously huge right there. So, um, or, I'm, or I'm taking cards out of his hand either way. But then he goes ahead and jet Gatlings, and he goes down to one card in hand. I obviously rest uh, nine Don. I play Yamato, and then I just pass. Now we're on an even playing field, but I have like eight cards in hand. He has one card in hand, same life, and I have one, two, three, four characters on the board that are 9k he has three characters on the board and one that is a 7k so i and i have a blocker so i'm winning this game no matter what so all of this is to show you um actually there's one more play i want to talk about too and then and then i'll i'll, I'll wrap up the video but man i actually love making videos like this i love like i've always wanted to like be like a commentator or like an analyzer or something like that i always thought i would do it for sports but, you know, this is actually something I, I, I like just as much as like football and basketball. So um, I, I like this a lot. And um, yeah, I, I just I just really like making videos like this. Let me know. Like I, I have a video, a, a, a section on uh, my discord that kind of lets you guys submit video ideas. And that way I can I can, you know, take them under advisement and then and then obviously do that. Let me know if there's something in that in the, in the discord or even in the comments below that you guys would like me to do. And then um and then obviously, uh, you know, if, if I like the idea or it's practical, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Some of them are just not feasible, unfortunately. So right here, I think was a big mistake, guys. Right here was a big mistake. He has one card in hand. So him playing a Miss Golden Week isn't going to do anything. You have to kind of go for it here. You have four huge attacks and then one kind of, you know, and then obviously your leader. I only have two life and one blocker. You just kind of have to go for it because there's just no way you survive next turn with nine cards with one with two cards in hand. It's just impossible. So you wasting that two dawn like that that dawn could have actually came in handy a lot. So swinging seven at life here. Let's see what he does. I'm gonna use Croc's effect. I'm gonna obviously ramp it back up with Croc, and then I'm going to discard a Soul Pocus right there, a little spice card right there, and then I'm going to go ahead and blast breath and then you know get out of the seven k attack super easily. And I do that, obviously, so I don't have to discard multiple cards with the uh, uh, with the, the, the nine. So he swings uh, seven at my life, and I go ahead and I take it, and then he swings nine at my life, and I go ahead. I think I block this one, yeah, because now I realize that like I have the counter to be able to take it. And then he goes 10 at my life here. There's This is the play that's the most important thing. I think he goes 10. No, he goes nine. And I do the math in his in my head. And I'm thinking, even if he has a Maru, can I survive this, right? Because I don't want him to cheese me with a Maru. So that obviously, whenever you're taking life or whenever you're like obviously considering countering out, you have to think what, he, what he's going to do with the rest of his Dawn. So obviously, one, two, three, four, five. He has five Dawn left. That very well could be play the, the blocker that he got off the Miss Golden Week or try to go for game. So because I had the counter in my hand, I went ahead and just took it because I wanted to bait him into using... Or I'm sorry, into putting all of his Dawn on Crocodile and swinging 14, which generally speaking, 14 could be pretty good, right? But I, you know, I, I obviously have it, so I bait him into attacking into me. I do this all the time. I did this in the Treasure Cup. You guys watch my stream, and that's how I beat this Purple Luffy because I baited him into swinging 9K with uh, Miss Double Finger, and I had, uh, actually, I can get to 11K encounter. So I go ahead and take it, and I'm like, okay, no trigger. And then he's like, he thinks for a second, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward real quick the 30 seconds right here, and... He's like, okay, do I just play the the Miss Golden Week and then pass or what? He's looking at his trash, seeing if he has any Blast Breaths left or El Thors, which totally makes sense. I think I'm going to fast forward it one more time. Well, sorry, I didn't want to I didn't want to spoil it there. So he swings 14K at life, putting the five dollar in Crocodile, and I go 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. And then uh, he just scoops right then and there because obviously he has one card or two cards in hand and I have this many big bodies. So... That's the game right there. That is the game right there, guys. This was probably one of the most, like, when I watched this video, I actually went over it with him uh, after after uh, I kind of watched it to see if there's any. I usually watch my videos to see if there's anything I could have done differently if I messed up at all, if, uh, especially if I don't post it. And I was like, yo, this would be a perfect video for, like, resource management. Because right here, 
like w- with respect to Alessandro, I played that almost as per. I think I played that like a, like it was a virtuoso, bro, like an actual virtuoso performance. I played it perfectly. Like there was nothing I could have done differently, and I was able to gain so much card advantage because of it. I was able to calculate Dawn because of it, and it just helped me win the game. And right there, if you guys watch this video, you'll be able to see just how much like like just how well you can thread the needle and that will help you like that will help you just survive because this way you're always like keeping like by threading the needle you're not discarding cards you shouldn't take or I'm sorry you shouldn't discard you're not taking life you shouldn't take and you know every micro decision you make can sometimes result in you having three to four extra cards every single game to work with or to like survive with towards the end. And if you make these tiny, tiny mistakes, they're going to lead you down a path where because you discarded this card, now you don't have counter to protect this card. And because you don't have counter to protect this card, then now you lose this card and now you don't have pressure. And now this and that, I'm telling you, it leads you down a rabbit hole. So if you make, if you play perfectly, you're going to have so much more cards. You're going to have more characters on board. You're going to be able to have more tempo. You're going to be able to do so much more by just conserving your resources. So let me know if you guys like this video. This is probably one of my favorite videos I think I've ever made. Like this in the concepts of pressure video. I just, I think these are both like some of the, like the, the best videos I've ever made. So uh, obviously if you guys want to like this video, that'd be great. Subscribing to the channel. I'm almost at 7,000 subscribers, guys. That's be, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That is so cool. If you guys want to join my uh, Discord, uh, and and also if you want to get the playmat, join my Discord and message me uh, on Discord for this playmat right here on the left. And then obviously I'm doing YouTube uh, memberships, which is kind of like Patreon. If you guys want to do the click the join button, I'm going to be posting some uh, OPO6 like deck decks, trying to make some other decks more relevant. Uh, I'm going to, you know, pop, possibly post like a, a, you know, some Kaido videos on there. I'm going to post some crocodile videos on there. I'm going to post some like, uh, you know, just every, every leader I can, I can do on my off time. Uh, I'm going to post it on my YouTube memberships. I've been slacking for too long. I, I I've had spurts where I post a lot and then I stopped posting, but it's going to be consistent from this point on because now this is my full-time job. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Much love to you guys and see ya.